Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the channel. I hope that you will like what you see and subscribe below for more. In today's video, we are going to be sewing. We're going to be sewing along to the new McCall's. This is McCall's 8449. This is a Mrs. Dress in three different lengths and I'm going to be following along with VC on this pattern. Let's get started. Again, we're going to be sewing along to McCall's 8449 and I will be following along with view C on this pattern. For suggested fabrics, right here along the top, the pattern recommends a chalet, cotton blend, linen, or poplin for this dress. And you will also need some additional notions as well as some fusible interfacing for this dress. For fabric, I'll be using this cotton poplin. And for size reference, I have cut the size 16 on this dress. I do recommend that you look at the finished garment measurements because the sizing of the finished garment is generous for this pattern. So definitely make sure that you're looking at the finished garment measurements along the bottom portion of the pattern to make sure that you are getting the correct size envelope. Let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is start working on pattern piece number one, and that is the front. Along the shoulder seams, you should have transferred two notches here. So you can see one notch here as well as another notch here. Between the two notches, you want to do some gathering stitches. For gathers, you want to lengthen out your stitch length from the normal stitch length to the longest. For me on my machine, that's a 5.0, but it could be different for yours. So definitely make sure that you take a look at your manual. I like to back stitch on one end of my stitches. That way when I pull this side of the threads, the entire thing doesn't pull out but you can choose to not backstitch, that's up to you. But you just wanna go ahead and do two rows of gathering stitches like I've done here between the notches that are along both of your shoulders on pattern piece number one. Go ahead and do your gathering stitches now. Now that you have your gathers done, the next thing that you wanna do is go ahead and do some reinforcing right here at our dots that we transferred along the front opening. So to reinforce, I'm gonna begin my stitch about an inch above that small dot here. I'm not gonna back stitch, I'm just gonna stitch here. When I get to the small circle, I'm gonna pivot and come across. Once I get to this circle, I'm gonna pivot and stitch back up about an inch. And after we have it reinforced, then we can slash diagonally to the small dot. Let's go ahead and reinforce it now. Once you have your reinforcing done, you wanna go ahead and slash diagonally to your small circles. Be sure not to clip through your stitching, just clip right up to your small dot. Be sure again not to clip through your stitching. Once you've done your reinforcing, let's go ahead and grab pattern piece number two, our right placket. Okay, this is my pattern piece number two, the right placket. You wanna make sure that you transfer all of your markings here, your circles as well as your buttonhole markings. And you wanna go ahead and apply your interfacing. I've applied my interface to the wrong side of my pattern piece. Once you have an interface and you transfer your markings, you wanna go ahead and fold under 3 8 of an inch along the long unnotched edge. So this edge right here has notches. So on the side that does not have notches, you want to go ahead and fold under 3 8 of an inch. So that is what I've done here. Go ahead and do that like I've done here, and then we can go ahead and apply this onto our front. Okay, right sides facing. This is the right side of my fabric here. I have my markings on the wrong side. So if your fabric's like mine, you may want to put some extra markings just so you know you're right from wrong side. But with right sides facing, I'm going to lay down pattern piece number two, make sure I match up my notches. I'm going to grab my pins and I'm going to start to pin in place. Okay, you wanna go ahead and pin, again, making sure that you match up your notches as well as your small dot. So I'm gonna begin stitching up here at the top and I'm gonna stitch all the way down to the small dot here and I'm gonna back stitch here once I get to the end. You want to do this stitch in a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. <laughs> Once 
Once you have your placket sewn on, you want to go ahead and press your seam toward your placket. And then next we're gonna turn our placket toward the inside and we're gonna fold it along the fold line. So you should have transferred your fold line here. I've transferred the circle that's along the top of my fold line. So again, we're gonna press our seam toward the placket, then we're gonna fold it in half along the fold line. This is what the placket looks like once it has been nice and pressed. Next, we're gonna go ahead and grab our pins and we are going to pin this so that we can stitch in the ditch right here along the right side, catching in the underside of our stitch. So let's go ahead and grab our pins so we can pin in place. So with stitching in the ditch, we are gonna be stitching on the right side of our fabric, so we need our pins to be on the right side of the fabric. But I'm just gonna place my pin right here in the groove of the seam. And I wanna make sure that I catch a little bit of the fabric. So I have a little bite of the fabric right here. So when I stitch in the ditch, I'm gonna be catching that fabric right here in that seam. And I'm just gonna continue doing that all the way down. So you just put your pin right in the seam and want to make sure that you're catching fabric on the underside. So this is what the wrong side of my fabric looks like. So again, you want to make sure that you catch in some of the fabric so when we stitch it on the right side, you'll be able to catch in the underside and close up the stitch. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, here's a look at my finished right placket. So here is the front. And as you can see, we stitched right here in that groove of the seam. And this is what it looks like on the inside. Really nice and clean. And that's just because I was able to get my pins in there to make sure I caught the underside of the fabric. So just make sure that you pin and catch the underside of your fabric so you have a nice clean stitch. Let's go ahead and do the left side the same exact way. So we're gonna grab pattern piece number three. We are going to first make sure that you apply your interfacing and we're gonna fold under the unnotched edge in a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Again, the same way that we did for pattern piece number two, make sure you're folding under the unnotched edge. And with the right sides facing, we're going to place it along the front along the left side. Make sure that you match your notches that you transferred here along the front. We are going to pin it in place. Okay, once you have the left front placket panned on, again, make sure that you pin matching up that small dot. You matched up your notches, go ahead and stitch in a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. After you have it stitched, press your seam going toward your placket, and then you're gonna fold this placket in half toward the inside the same way that we did for this one here. We're gonna pin it and then stitch it in the ditch again the same exact way. So go ahead and stitch on your left placket the same way that we did for the right, and then we will move on to the next step. Okay, now that we have our left placket sewn on the same way that we did for the right, so now let's go ahead and move on to the next step. We're gonna take our right and lap it over the left. So I'm gonna just fold the left to the inside like so, and I'm gonna lap the right over it. So that's step one. The next thing that we want to do is, is make sure that we have this clipped edge here that we clipped in the beginning stages going down toward the front. So this is coming out toward the front. I will say that if you find this kind of difficult to bring this through freely, you may need to check to make sure you didn't go past your small dots. I actually had to unpick one stitch on both sides just because it was pulling a little bit and this wouldn't fall forward nice and smooth. So if you're finding that it's a little, you know, pulley and it's not really laying nice and flat, just when you pull it forward, just take a double check and see if it's pulling. And if so, you may need to unpick maybe one or two stitches. Once you have it laying together like so, I'm going to pick up all three of those layers, not picking up the front of the dress. So I just have the right placket, the left placket, and I have this portion that we clipped. That is all I'm holding on to right now. We're not going to be stitching onto the dress just yet. First, we need to base all of this together. So what you can do is grab a pin, 
and I'm just going to go ahead and pin my placket together here. Once you have it pinned together, again, I don't have the dress. I'm only pinning the two plackets and this portion here that we clipped earlier. We are going to baste the lower edges together, making sure that we keep the front free. So let's go ahead and do a basting stitch right here. Okay, I've gone ahead and done my basting stitch here and it is holding together again, just this portion that we clipped and both of the plackets. I did go ahead and give it a press and then I transferred my stitching line. Your stitching line is located along the bottom of pattern piece number two. So if your marking has disappeared, you can just lay your pattern piece back down and go ahead and transfer your marking. So I've transferred mine here. Now we're gonna stitch across all thicknesses to secure the placket onto the front. Once you have your stitching line, we are going to fold under 3 8 of an inch on the right placket here. You want to fold that under so that it covers the lower ends and then we are going to pin that to the front. So you just want to make sure that you don't have any fabric kind of peeking out along the side. Go ahead and press that in place. Again, you're pressing it up so that it's covering the lower edge like so. Now we can pin this in place. Mine is a little thick, so I'm just gonna go and press mine really good. Once you have it pinned or pressed, we're going to stitch along the sides as well as the lower edge, stitching it to the front, meeting it back up here to the stitching line. Let's go ahead and stitch it in place now. Okay, here's a finished look at my stitch. A few things that I would recommend now that I have it finished is I would try to reduce some of the bulk in here from the other layers of the fabric, just so it's not, mine is a little bit bumpy here. I do wish I would have trimmed that down some. But again, here's a close up of my stitch. Let's move on to the next step. To begin, we're gonna start working with the back pattern piece. And along the back, you should have transferred two notches along the upper edge of the back. We're gonna put two rows of gathering stitches, the same way that we did for the front along the shoulder. You're gonna do it again right here between the two notches that you transferred along the back. Once you have them installed, again, you do it the same exact way that you did to the front. We are just gonna pull up to start creating gathers like so. And like I said, I like to back stitch on one end so when I'm pulling, I'm not pulling the threads out, but you can choose not to back stitch. It's totally up to you. You don't have to, but just be careful when you are pulling up on your gathering stitches not to pull out your stitches from the other side. So let's go ahead and grab our yoke pattern piece now once you have some of the gathers formed. You should have cut out two yoke pattern pieces, pattern piece number five. And so what we're gonna do is these two notches here that we transferred along the upper back edge, we're gonna make sure they match up with the yoke. So you can just keep gathering your fabric until they match up here. Okay, once you have it gathered, we can go ahead and pin in place. I'm gonna start pinning here at the notches. Make sure that you distribute out the gathers so that they're nice and even. You don't want it to just be a clump of gathers in one section. So just spread everything out. Okay, so I have my yoke pinned on and I have these yokes facing right sides together. Again, I've transferred my markings onto the wrong side of my fabric, so this is the wrong side here. So make sure that you have your yoke right sides facing. Before we go to the sewing machine, I'm gonna go ahead and pin on my other yoke. The pattern instructions have us installing this so that we do slip stitching once this is finished, but I'm gonna go ahead and install it now, and that way I can do the burrito method and still create a nice clean finish once I have it sewn. So I'm gonna place this right size up, so this is the right side of the yoke facing up. This is the wrong side of my dress, so I'm gonna lay this here, wrong side of dress, to the right side of the yoke. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and pin this all together Now that we have both of our yokes pinned on, we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and we're gonna go ahead and stitch at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance.
Okay, I've just sewn my two yoke pattern pieces to my dress here in the middle. So this is what the outside of my dress looks like here. This is the right side of the dress. And the inside of the dress looks like this. I put an X here just so you can see that this is the wrong side of my fabric. So this is what the inside looks like. First, I'm gonna go ahead and trim my seam and trim away any loose threads that I have here and then give everything a nice press upward. Okay, now that we have trimmed our seams, I've trimmed mine down here, and I have pressed my yokes going upward. Now we want to do a burrito method to give us a nice clean finish along the shoulder seams. The first thing that we want to do is drop down the yoke facing. The yoke facing is the one that's on the inside of your garment. So we're gonna drop that one down and make sure that it's out of the way. So now we're gonna take our front pattern piece and we're going to pin our shoulders together right sides facing. So right sides facing, we're gonna match up our shoulders. And again, you should have gone ahead and transferred those gathers along your shoulder edge here along the front pattern piece. We're just gonna pull up those gathers the same way that we did for the back. And then we want to match up the notches that are here. I'm just gonna continue pulling up a little bit more to my notches match up. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and pin it in place. So we are pinning right sides facing our front to our back. Again, your yoke facing, it should be down out of the way. I'm only pinning my front to my back along the shoulder seams, not the yoke facing. Now that we have our shoulder seams pinned, we can go to the sewing machine and we can go ahead and stitch this in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that we have our shoulder seams sewn, before we trim away our seam allowance, I want us to go ahead and sew our yoke facing onto this seam. And to do that, what we're gonna do is, so I have the inside of my garment here. You all can see my seam here. This is the front side that has the gathers. So I am just gonna fold up I just kind of start rolling up the bottom portion of the dress. I'm just gonna roll and roll until the facing portion of the yoke comes up. And what we're gonna do is take this portion, roll it over, and match it up to the seam here. And now we can pin this in place. So again, we have our shoulder seam sewn here, and I'm just gonna begin folding up the bottom of my dress. I have my front and my back together. I'm just rolling it up. And here is the yoke facing here. I'm gonna roll this over, bring it to the seam like so. This creates sort of like a little burrito. And we're going to pin, matching up our notches here along the shoulder. And then we're gonna stitch right along our previous stitching line. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pins, pin my seams in place. And then again, I'm just gonna stitch right along the same previous stitching line that we just sewed to connect the yoke facing. Go ahead and pin the other side the same way and then we can go ahead and stitch at a 5 8 of inch seam allowance or again you can just follow along with your previous stitch. Now that we have the yoke facing sewn onto the shoulder seam, now we can trim our seam. Okay, now we can just go ahead and pull our dress out gently. Okay, so this here is the inside of my dress and you can see that we have a nice clean seam. I'll just go back in and get all the loose threads out of the way. But this is what the inside of your dress will look like after you have done the burrito method. And this is what the outside will look like. You have nice clean shoulder seams on the outside as well as on the inside of your garment. Now let's go ahead and trim away any loose threads and give everything a good press. After you have it trimmed and pressed, then we can go ahead and just baste the raw edges together. So your raw edges right here along your yoke, you can baste together as well as along your neck edge. Baste the raw edges together. Now that we have basted our raw edges together here along the yoke as well as the neckline, let's go ahead and start to work on our pockets. So here's one of my pockets here, and as you can see, I've gone ahead and finished off the raw edges with my serger. And so now with right sides facing, I'm gonna find my notch here along the side. I'm gonna match up my notches. I'm gonna pin in place there first. 
And then I'm going to pin as well, just along the pocket. We don't have to pin into the circles just yet. Okay, once you have your pocket pinned on, we can go ahead and stitch just using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Make sure that you back stitch at the beginning as well as the end of the pocket. And again, we're stitching in a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that we have our pocket sewn on, you wanna make sure that you attach all four pockets the same way. You can go ahead and press out your seam going toward your pocket. Once you have that done, now we're gonna place our pockets right sides facing. So go ahead and turn your dress. So with right sides facing, go ahead and pin your side seam, making sure that you pin your underarm as well. So just go ahead and pin it together. I'm going to pin right here at my first circle and make sure that I'm coming through the back side of the same circle and I am. Okay, once you have your side seam pinned, now we can go ahead and stitch it together. The instructions have you stitching along your side seam and a 5 8 of inch seam allowance. However, once you stitch down here to this dot, you're going to pivot and go around your pocket and then come back up to this dot pivot and then continue stitching down your side seam. If you would like, you can do a 5 8 of an inch stitch and just come here, stop stitching, cut your thread, start back stitching here and stitch down and then go back and sew around your pocket. The choice is up to you how you want to do it. Just make sure that you keep this part here open so you'll be able to get your hand into your pocket. Let's go ahead and sew our side seam now. Okay, once you have your side seam sewn, as you can see, I have mine sewn here. You wanna go ahead and clip your back seam allowance only above and below your pocket. So the back seam allowance only, we're just gonna clip above and below the pocket. Be sure not to clip through your stitching. We're just gonna clip above and below the pocket. So that way we can press our seam open and flat. Once we go to our ironing board, we can go ahead and press our seam open. Up under our underarm seam, you can stitch over that previous stitching again just to give it some security. And we can also clip to our stitching right here in this curve if necessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side and then we can give it a really good press and move on to start to work on our collar. All right, I've given my side seam a press and here's my pockets here. So go ahead and press yours as well. Next, let's go ahead and grab our collar pieces. For our collar pieces, you should have cut out two of fabric and one of interfacing. So I have my interface piece here, and this is the uninterfaced one. For your uninterfaced collar portion, on the side that has one notch, the single notch, we are going to fold under 5 eighths of an inch, and then you wanna trim it down to 3 eighths of an inch. So on my single notched edge, I've gone ahead and fold under 5 eighths of an inch. So now I'm gonna trim it down to about 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, once you have it trimmed, we are gonna lay our collars right sides facing and we are going to pin along the double notched edge as well as to the side. You should have transferred some marking here. This folded edge should meet right here with your marking that you transferred. We can go ahead and pin that in place. So I'm just gonna match up my notches, my double notches and pin, and just pin all along the top curved edge. Okay, now that we have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch in a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Be sure to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Okay, once you have it sewn, we can go ahead and trim Around the curves, I like to use my pinking shears. And I mean, you can continue using pinking shears if you like, or you can just turn to your regular scissors, or you can just do some clips right here to take out that fullness along the curve. You don't need to use pinking shears. Okay, now we can go ahead and turn it toward the inside and go and give your collar a really good press. Now that you have your collar pressed, let's go ahead and grab our dress and we can pin it to our neck edge. You should have some notches. Make sure you match those notches up. 
Once you have your collars pinned, we can go to the sewing machine and we can go ahead and stitch it in place using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And if you need to, you can put a few clips right here just to kind of spread a little bit to get a little bit more room around the neckline so that the collar fits. But once you have it pinned on, let's go ahead and stitch and a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once you have your collar sewn on, now we can go ahead and trim our seam. And I just want to show you all the little clips that I put along the neckline, just so I can kind of slash and spread to ease in the collar here. So if you have to do the same, definitely put a few clips in, that way you'll be able to attach your collar nice and smooth. So here's the back side of my collar here. So again, if you have to place a few snips into your fabric just to kind of slash and spread it, then do that. Once you have it attached, let's go ahead and trim. Once you have it trimmed, we can go ahead and press our seam up toward the collar. We're gonna bring this folded pressed edge over the seam, pin it in place on the right side of the fabric, and then stitch in the ditch the same way that we did for both of our plackets. So let's go ahead and finish up our collar now. Okay, once you have your collar sewn on, this is what mine looks like here. I have my collar all sewn. I will say it was hard for me to get around the um, ends, the corners right here. So I'll probably go back and just do a little slip stitching right here just to make sure I have those secure. If you prefer to sew by hand, you can absolutely sew this by hand instead of stitching in the ditch. But this is what my collar looks like. Now let's go ahead and start to work on our front and back bands for around our armhole. So on our sleeve band, which is pattern piece number 14, you want to go ahead and fold your sleeve band right sides facing. And we are going to stitch right here along this little curve at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna match up my notch that we have right there. I'm just gonna pin and I'll place a few more pins right here. So we're just gonna sew at a 5 8 of an inch right here along this curve. I've gone ahead and I've done this one here so you can, you can see where I did my stitch and then I've placed a few clips right here right along that curve. And then on the unnotched edge, you want to fold under 5 8 of an inch and then we can trim that down to 3 8 of an inch. But first, let's go ahead and do this stitch. And then again, on this edge that is unnotched, we're gonna fold under 5 8 of an inch and then trim it down to 3 8 of an inch. So let's go to the machine now and go ahead and stitch this in place. Now that we have our bands sewn and we have pressed up along the unnotched edge, 5 8 of an inch, and then we have trimmed it down to 3 8 of an inch, let's go ahead and pin it onto our dress. So we're gonna be pinning the right side of the band to the wrong side of the dress. So I'm gonna go ahead and just flip my dress so that the wrong side is out like so. And again, we want the right side of the band to be to the wrong side of the dress. So right sides to wrong side, like so. We're gonna match up our seams here, match up your notches, match up your dots, match up your seams, and let's go ahead and pin everything in place. Okay, once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch in a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have it stitched, we can clip into our curves and trim our seams. We're gonna do that for the other side as well. Okay, so here is my band here. I have it sewn on and I've pressed the seam going toward the band. So now I'm going to flip it to the right side of my garment. So this is how it looks like this. I just have it pressed, pressed it right along that seam and I have the band coming again toward the outside of the garment. So what I notice is this right here, it kind of has like a little wonky end. I'm just gonna tuck mine in the end of it. So I'm just tucking that in as best as possible and I'm gonna go ahead and stitch close to the pressed edge. I've already done this side here so you can see once you stitch it, how it will look once you stitch close to the pressed edge. And down here along the bottom, I just folded in that excess and stitched it as best as possible right here along that seam. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I have both of my sleeve bands sewn on here. And again, right at that portion that was extending, you can trim off some of that and fold it in and then just stitch close to the folded and pressed edge of it all the way along your band. Once you have your bands attached, we can go ahead and work on the hem. 
For the hem, you can finish off your raw edge and then fold up 5 eighths of an inch. And you can sew your hem in place by hand. For me, I just decided to go ahead and just do a machine stitch, but if you prefer, the instructions do state to hand sew your hem, easing in fullness if necessary. But for me, I just finished off the raw edge and I folded up my hem and I just went ahead and stitched it in place. After you have your hem sewn, let's go ahead and work on the sash. For the sash, you want to go ahead and stitch right sides facing along the notch edge like I've done here. So I've gone ahead and done my stitch. I pressed it open. Next, we're going to fold it in half like so, right sides facing. I'm going to pin here right at my seam. I'm going to pin a little bit over here as well. And then I'm going to leave an opening so that we can turn out our sash after we have it sewn. So I'm just going to put a pin going horizontal here so I know not to stitch this closed. And just go ahead and fold your sash in half like so and place pins in it. We're going to pin the other side the same way and once you have it pinned, we're going to begin sewing following along with this stitching line here that's on our pattern. So we could start over here and just begin to stitch. Following along, you using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way down the sash, being sure to leave an opening so we can flip everything right side out. So let's go ahead and stitch our sash together now. Once you have your sash sewn, we can go ahead and trim our seams. And then once you have it trimmed, go ahead and flip it right side out. Once you have your tie turned right side out, now we just need to go back and close up the opening. You can grab a needle and thread and slip stitch this closed. Or if you'd like, you can do a really tiny edge stitch really close to the edge here to go ahead and close up this opening. But let's go ahead and close up the opening here on our sash and then we can move on to doing our buttons and buttonholes. Okay, once we have the sash complete, the last thing that we need to do is to apply our buttonholes and our buttons. Now, because all of our sewing machines are different, if you're not quite sure how to apply your buttonholes and your buttons, please refer to your machine manual. Once you have those applied, you will be all done with this dress. Well, that is all for the video, and I really do hope that you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them down for me below. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn your notifications so you know when the next video goes live. And I will see you all in the next one. Blessings, everyone. Bye.